God. As you all know, I am Prophetess Deanna Nixon. Come on, somebody. And let me talk about that for a minute. I grew up in a church where they said that we're not supposed to know titles. So you see, let me tell you why I love God. Because I talk to God about everything. I'm not kidding. What to wear, what not to wear, where to go, where not to go. And God said, Deanna, if I called you, no, no, first he took me to the Bible. Prophet Haggai. Prophet Isaiah. See, so I got an old Bible that actually says that, okay? The new Bibles don't have that. As a matter of fact, I have an old Bible that says, the birth of the Lord for every prophet book. He said, people need to know who you are, who I've called you to be. So it's not just about titles. I know people abuse titles, but if you don't agree, it's called the power of agreement. You must agree with God for that thing to come up on your life. Come on, somebody, have a good. So quit let people tell you, hey, I don't call myself that, but that's because you're not walking in it, baby. Because when you're walking in it, you gotta talk it. You gotta walk it like you're talking. Come on, somebody, have a good. So, let me get into my message. Ooh, it's heavy, you guys, it's heavy. So let me go ahead and do this thing. Praise God, praise God. I'm actually going back to last night, I talked about Joshua, how with the Joshua generation, and we have to take the land. So today I'm gonna to talk to you about David. <laughs> it takes courage to take the land. It takes courage to even take the authority that was given to you. Come on somebody, hallelujah. So let me walk this thing out. I'm gonna teach you tonight. I hope that's okay. All right, praise God, praise God. God told me to tell you, he said, my people are not trained in the things of God. He said, they trained to go to church. <laughs> they trained to say hallelujah and glory be to God. He said, but they're not trained in the things of God. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. God says, you have to walk in the authority in order to take the land. The reason why David was so powerful, because David was not ashamed. So let's go to 1 Samuel 17, and we're going to start reading, please. Chapter 17, 1 Samuel. Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle, and were gathered together at Shokah, which belonged to Judah, and pitched between Shokah and Askah in Asdaman. Verse 7, verse 2. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Eli, and set the battle in array against the Philistines. Verse 3. And the Philistines stood on a mountain on one side, and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side. And there was a valley between them. Verse 4. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath, or God, whose height was six cubits and a span. I, I just want to tell you there just for a moment about that step number six. I'm about to school you as if you're in my class. Y'all know numbers are everything. I'm going to say it again. Numbers are everything. Watch form. Two, 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 five, five, five. That was a young lady, right? God's giving her visions. Two means unity. Five means grace. Six is actually the mark of the beast. Oh, come on, so, and the number of man. But let me work that thing out. You see, the number six is man. The beast number is 666, right? Antichrist number is 666. Notice you have to be six feet apart. Y'all gonna catch that in a minute. This is a satanic world. Everything is six. <laughs> Y'all better understand what I'm saying. And let me continue. Let me continue. Let me continue. I gotta go. I gotta go. Because I have a lot of information. Verse five. And he had a helmet of great weight of brass upon his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was five thousand shekels of brass. Verse six. And he had greaves of brass upon his legs and a target of brass between his shoulders. Verse seven. And the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spear's head weighed, here goes, 600 shekels of iron and one bearing a shield went before him. <laughs> Hope y'all catching that. Verse eight. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, why are you come unto set battle in array? Am I not a Philistine? and yet servants to Saul, choose you a man for you, and let him come down to me. People of God, that's what we have been doing. You don't go down to no enemy, you let the enemy come up to you. Come on somebody, help me, because anytime you go down, you actually, one thing I learned, the most powerful way of prayer, the position, is prostate. You wanna defeat your enemy? I dare you to go in a prostate. I've been doing it all my life. 
And let me tell you how good it is. My grandfather was getting ready to die in 2006. And I tear it all night long on that floor, prostrate. I said, God, I'm not ready. Did you hear what I said? I said, God, I'm not ready. I prayed all night long. The next morning they say, he gonna live. I said, I already know. Hallelujah! You don't understand the authority that you have. You have authority over death and life. She just said it. Proverbs 18, 21. Count their life with a powerful tongue, and those that love should eat the fruit thereof. God told me to ask you, what are you speaking? Why is the body of Christ so feeble and weak when you have all authority? You gotta speak it. But you can't speak it if you don't believe it, God says. So first, I gotta get into your heart. How does it get into your heart? Because you have to fall in love with the word of God. And I'm gonna tell you right now, when you try to get in the word, the phone will ring, Facebook will ding, everybody will call you. You have to get in that place before God. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Where it's just you and God. Hallelujah. Yes, amen. This stuff real. It's called spiritual authority. Let me continue. Now I'm gonna go um, to, actually I wanna go back to nine, verse nine. If B, if he be able to fight with me and to kill me, then will you be your servants. But if I prevail against you and kill him, then shall, then shall ye be our servants and serve us. God told me to tell you, why are Christians servants of sin? And I'm not here to judge because we all fall short of the glory of God. But, 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 what is your sin? You don't have to tell people, what is your sin? Don't play with me up here. What is your sin? If Jesus came today, right now, would you really go to heaven? Because that's what this is all about, right? Ain't it about heaven and hell? Hell and hell. Come on, somebody with me. Do you know where you're really going? Because anytime you are a slave of sin, you have no authority. You have no store authority. I've seen Christians die. I'm talking about true Christians, by the way. One of my best friends, I never forget, a prophetess. She was dating this guy. And that day she did not ask God if I should go with him. It was on national news, Oakland, California. She didn't know he had a hit out on her. So they put 24 bullets in her too. I cried, I fell to the floor. I said, God, I don't understand. Because this is a woman of God. He said, Deanna, she did not confirm with me if she should go. We can hit too many times because you're not asking God to confirm his word. Confirmation is revelation. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. And that comes from authority. Oh, 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 let's go here. Who does have authority over your life? Do you know? Because if you have authority over your life and you have to give God the authority, the almighty authority, you lose authority. Amen. And sin causes you to lose authority. Yeah. So what am I saying? In order to truly walk into your authority, you got to deal with that sin, whatever it is. And don't, don't, don't get it twisted, because I got some things too, just like you do. But it's time to deal with them. How is it that you can't lay hands on yourself? I'm just asking. That's because you ain't got no authority. Come on, somebody, let me continue. Let me continue. I have a lot of information. Verse 10. And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. Verse 11. When Saul and all Israel heard these words by the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. COVID, 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 COVID. And Lord, I'm about to go here. Lord, if you watch this, I don't mean any, any harm. That's what actually eliminated two of the speakers. So if you're going to tell me that you're going to baptize with mass when I ain't got no mass on, hold on, I respect everybody. But when you come into this thing and you're a leader, you got to flow like we flow. I respect medical information. Don't get it twisted. And I'm going to tell you when I had cancer, I almost died, what God told me. Little people, I wish I could save that letter, but I threw that letter away. Because it, it upset me. The doctor wrote me and said, you're going to die. You're going to die. And I asked God, I said, God, what do you say? Now, I'm going to be honest with you. Look, I look like that. I had lost so much weight. I, 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 he had made a mistake in my body, so I had to wear bags. I don't want to rush y'all off, but y'all know what the bags was. I couldn't even use the bathroom. And, and, it, and it felt like I was going to die. And I asked God, I said, God, am I going to die? He said, no, but you have to fight. And he said, you have to fight alone and not with no medicine. Now, that was just for me. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. So I got on a vegetarian diet, and I did what I did. Come on, somebody. And I wasn't never that I had authority. I said, Devin, you are not. I'm not going to die today. What am I saying? It's not that it's not fact that COVID is real, but is it truth? I 
challenge you. Because the world tells me that by his stripes I am healed. And then, they, then people are going to tell me, well, people die of COVID. They die a lot of things. What am I saying? What are you speaking? What are you thinking? Notice it said, greatly afraid. My brothers and sisters, why are you so afraid? Because guess what? You can die anytime, anywhere. I know people that just fell down dead. Your authority. God said the enemy allowed this thing, man-made disease. I'm sorry, I'm going to say it like it is. I can talk to the game, something like that. And now you're walking around afraid. Now hold on. This is not to try to belittle anyone that has a mask on. I respect that. Don't, don't even get it twisted. But I'm talking about the real thing. You won't believe God. Who's your part or you won't believe? Right. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Let me continue. I told you I have a lot of stuff. All right. So now I'm actually going to own Praise God. Praise God. So I want to talk to you about also, and it seems like I'm going another place than I am. The book of Numbers. I keep coming back to that. I'm not going there. I just want to tell you something. God is a God of numbers. I write like I'm doing this sermon, right? I got July 17th, 2021. Because I promise you, next year on July 17th, God will give me something that probably pertains to this. God is a God of numbers. I'm going to prove it to you right now. Dates, addresses, birthdays, calendars, days, times, hours, minutes, seconds. Get it? Everything, but you can't even discern it if you don't have authority and a relationship with God. But let me continue. Let me continue. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. So we're gonna actually go to Second Samuel and we're gonna start at twenty-four. All right. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the men, they fled unto him and were so afraid. Twenty-five. And the men of Israel say, Have ye come up this way? Surely to divide Israel is come up, and it should be that the man who killed the king will enrich the king will enrich him with great riches, and will give him his done and make his father's house free. Hold on, we're gonna skip all over here to the good stuff. We'll go to thirty-six. David started talking now. He said, "Thy servants slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine should be one of them." Every time that someone comes into your being that don't have a covenant. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? That's what I said. You don't have a covenant. And even if you do have a covenant, you better have permission. Because there's too much people, I don't know why, I'm going to go to the left. We flow with the Holy Spirit. Quit coming against a man or woman of God and you don't know their authority in the Spirit. You're going to get hit. And it's going to be lit. Too many of y'all doing that. You know what you're supposed to do if a man or a woman of God is saying something they got no business or doing something? You go straight to God and God will go to them. Oh, God will take care of his. I don't know who that's for. I got the chill. I don't know who that's for. Keep your mouth off men and women of God yeah. without authority. You have to be authorized. You just can't do that. Every time I've said a does say the Lord, I know they thought I was lying or kind, whatever. I don't know. I promise you I was authorized. And it hurt me to my heart. Because when you're a true Christian, you're not trying to belittle your brother or sister. But I gotta tell you, if you're dirty, you're dirty. Hallelujah. And guess what? Oh, I'm about to, I'm about to release y'all to do something. I don't know why a leader's lying. I don't care if it's a leader. Go with two elders to that leader, and he has to sit down and listen or her. This thing will both ways. No one is except, says the Lord. If you're wrong, you're wrong. If you're right, you're right. Come on, somebody, let me continue. Praise God, praise God. So he says, this Philistine should be as one of them, seeing he had divided the armies of the living God. Verse 37. David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of the Philistine. And Saul said unto David, go, and the Lord be with thee. Some of you are going, and God ain't even with you. You can't go unless God is with you. I mean, you can go, but God ain't gonna be with you. All right. You come on, somebody, let me give you the key. All right, so, verse 38. And Saul armed David with his armor, and he put a helmet of brass upon his head, and he armed him with a coat of mail, 39. And David girded his sword upon his armor, and he was, and was ready to go, for he had not proved it. Some of you are trying to walk in something that you have not been proved of. If you know that you're not a prophet, you need to stop it. Amen. 
If you know you don't flow with the prophetic, just stop. Because everybody want to be a prophet these days. Let, let me tell you about that spiritual warfare. Every level that you say that you are, that is the demons that are assigned to attack your life. And if you can't walk in that authority, then you have no authority. Seven sons of Sceva, Paul I know, Jesus I know, but who are you? Or who do you pretend to be? Stay in your lane. Whatever God ordained you, stay in your lane. Because guess what? Just because a person is a prophet don't mean that there is some authority over you. You could be just a minister and still be anointed and appointed and called by God. Amen. Stop letting people bully you with their titles. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. All Let me right. continue. Let me continue. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off him. Verse 40. And he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones. There goes the numbers again. Five is the number of grace. So God had grace, David. Let me continue. Of the brook. And he put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had even in a script. And his sling was in his hand. And he drew near the Philistine. Why are y'all running from the devil when we're supposed to be running up to that fool? Right. And you got better than a sling. You got the authority of the Holy Spirit. Luke 10, 19. Hallelujah. The reason why God wanted to give this conference, we claim your spiritual authority because we've lost authority. Anytime a demon can really come into a church and not be exposed, <laughs> y'all want to know what happened yesterday that anointing. That's what happened. Come on. A demon should not be able to stand Hallelujah. in your throne. They can't. They can't. And I'm going to tell you something else too. When you say, Jesus, in the name of Jesus, they should be able to come out. If they don't come out, I'm just going to keep reading. <laughs> hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Verse 40. And he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had even in a script. And his snake was in his hand and he drew near the Philistine. Verse 41. And the Philistine came on and drew near unto David. And the man that bare the shell went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruby and a fair countenance. God is doing something in this youth in this hour. I, lie, I see it in my four-year-old grandson. He see things already. Uh-oh, I'm going to make you laugh for a minute. <laughs> so, <laughs> my son-in-law has some kind of can in the refrigerator. I don't know. I'm trying to be nice. But that, that, y'all know I am with signs. If you follow me, you know there are certain things that, hey, it makes me think, it makes me wonder. So, uh, that can had a, a, a sign on it I didn't like. And so I go upstairs talking like a grandmother. Now I didn't know better than that. Got that stuff in that refrigerator around my grandson. And so I, call, I text my daughter. I said, what is this? Who is this for? It ain't for me, mom. Okay, whatever. So I'm just talking. And I probably was doing a little bit too much talking. Y'all know. So that night, I'm laying down. And uh, I get a call from my daughter. She said, mama, you got to be stopped. I said, what? She said, what did you tell Austin? I said, I ain't told Austin nothing. She said, well, when his dad grabbed the can, Austin said, Dad, you drink that, you're going to be the devil, and that's the devil, and you know that's the devil, and Grandma says it's the devil. I mean, I was like, no way. <laughs> but he wasn't lying. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Out, <laughs> out of the mouth of babes, God is using them in this hour. Don't shut them up. I know you got to restrain them a little because they get a little. But don't shut them up, says the Lord. Come on, somebody. Let me continue. Let me continue. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 43. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with stars? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. 44. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh into the fowls of the air, and to the beasts of the field. Come on, somebody. Verse 45. Then David said to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts. You sitting up there asking demons to leave you alone on your job, in your household, at this way, at that way. Are you serious? You have all authority, honey. It is time for you to start taking it. And hold on. You ain't got to just slay all. Do you know who you are in the spirit? The spirit is foremost more than the natural. I look at people and I'm like, oh, you big and bad in the, in the, in the flesh. But you don't want to mess with me in the spirit. And how you grow in the spirit 
It's just like I told you earlier. You got to get in that word. You got to learn that word. You got to trust that word. Hold on. In good and in bad, because we love to say hallelujah if God bless you with some money or something. But what about when he allowed them hits? You know, I, I keep saying that. Because I feel like some of you have already gone through it, and some of you will go through it. Y'all know, know what time it is. Either you're going through, or you're coming out, or you're going in. It is with those moments that you're supposed to trust God with all your heart, your mind, your body, and your soul. Now, you don't want to because you're like, God, what is this? I don't understand this. I've done everything you've asked me to do. I fast, I pray, I don't do what I'm not supposed to do. What's going on? It's another level. That's what God told me to tell you tonight. Every last one of you, and I declare and declare, you're going to another level whether you want to or not. Because what you've been doing is, you, we, we, we got together. Come on, somebody. He said, you, you come with a, a sword and all that. I come in the name of the Lord. I came in the name of the Lord tonight. And guess what? You already agree because you did. So that thing was my heart said, God. Hallelujah. But, but this is good. You see y'all clapping and everything? Y'all clapping good. Y'all clapping. But when the problems come, when the bills come, when he said he don't want you no more, or vice versa, we start really feeling some kind of way. That is when it's going to cost you the most. You're supposed to trust God, good, bad, indifferent, be armor okay, because I don't say that word anymore. The devil is alive. Death and life are truly in the power of the tongue, says the Lord. I want you to leave here with power, power from the Holy Ghost. And you just can't do that like that. You have to believe it. A lot of people only believe it in this, in this atmosphere. Because when you go home, some of you, and I know this to be true, but at least tell me, you're going home with some mess. So you definitely need a message. It is time for you to start walking up in there with authority. Let me tell you something. I don't want mine, give me yours. This is what I do. Oh Lord, I gotta say that, my God. I love my dad, as a matter of fact, this conference is in honor of my Amen. dad, Mr. Wesley Dixon, the late Mr. Wesley Dixon. He was a pickle. <laughs> dad was start up in there. I'll make y'all laugh again right quick. We had got into it. People said we, we, we need our own sitcom. It wasn't ugly, but we just all, I don't know what it was. Maybe we were so much alike. One day, the dad called me. He said, you fat possum. I said, what you say? <laughs> now, I, I've been calling a lot of things, but I ain't got to call no fat possum now. I felt some kind of way. I called my girlfriend. Girl, you know what he called me? A fat possum. I said, I said, what does the possum look like? She said, she said maybe it's because your eyes big. <laughs> I said, what is this? So when dad would start that stuff, and he get out right because he was a war veteran, so I knew he was going through some things. He said, you don't know the people I have to kill. So I, I, I didn't attack him, I attacked that spirit. I would walk that house with the word. No one performed against Bishop Prosper. I am the head and not the tail. I decree and declare to be so. All spirits are subject to the spirit of God. I decree and declare to be so. Y'all better stop walking that word in your house. Sitting up there just letting them demons roam. The devil is a liar. And so are they. Come on, somebody. I believe it. It's called spiritual yeah. warfare. Let me continue. Yeah. I ain't gonna be a, I ain't gonna be long because to be honest with you, they kind of messed up our time. But God, come on, somebody. Somebody said, but God, come on, somebody. Because I'm almost finished. I'm almost finished. I'm almost finished. Okay, so praise God, praise God. Woo! I feel the power of God. I feel the power of God, y'all. Hallelujah. Tonight is tonight. Mm, I feel it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. Verse 46. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand, and I will smite thee and take thy hand from thee, and I will give the carcass of the host of the Philistine this day into the fowl of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, and all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel, people of God. It is time to let the world know that there is a God of Israel. Hallelujah. In your school, on your job. Oh, I'm scared. I'm like, you know what? They're already going to fire you, which I will be in the name of Jesus. But since we're talking about it, let me tell you what time it is. 2012. Last time I worked, I was working at Comcast, trying to be a supervisor. I, was, I, I don't even know when the bonus check was coming. I had to be the devil. 2000, 3000. I didn't even know what I was doing that good, but I liked it. I was like, yeah. 
And God said, I want you to leave your job. This is for about 15 of you. I'm prophesying. If you, I'm just the messenger. You already know. And God said, I want you to leave your job. I said, that ain't God. That's the devil. I know God's voice. <laughs> the money was good. I was like, you realize I got an expensive house. I'm living in California. I just bought a car. I a Mustang. You understand? I, this can't be God. God will never ask me to give up everything. I heard it again. And I tried to hold on to it. And stuff started getting real bad at that job. Real bad. Um, so, long story short, that's when I had cancer as well. I'm still trying to go to work. Sick, because I want the money. I heard God say, let go. I said, God, if I let go, I'm going to lose everything. He said, yep, you will. He said, but you said you love me, do you trust me? I'm talking to 15 of you in here. He said, you love me, do you trust me though? I know you love me, but do you trust me? With tears in my eyes, I said, I trust you. I lost everything. But I'm going to tell you the truth. That's when I really just started feeling God in my life. Because he showed me one about the money, the honey, and the funny. It was about a relationship. And then he told me, say, do you know that I own everything anyway? That I can give it back to you double? Come on, somebody out of me. Amen. Fifteen of you up in here. You've been struggling with that. I don't want to use this. I don't want to ask nobody for nothing. I don't want to do this. But let me tell you the glory of that thing. He told me to start doing prophetic calls. I haven't done it in years because those things drive me out. I'm talking about I would prophesy for three hours on Facebook. I mean, and, and accurately, accurately. You don't hear me. I'm not trying to count like, like I'm boastful. But three hours, accurately. And I, he said, I go to the mailbox. Do you know people sent me checks and paid all my bills for months? I said, God, how do you do that? He said, that's for being faithful. That's for trusting me. Remember, it's a training conference, a teaching conference. Yes. Trust him. Yes, yes, it was embarrassing. People talk about it. She lost her job. How's she going to pay for that, that car? <laughs> lost that too, by the way. Trust him. Just trust him. All right, let me continue. I have to be long. I know I've been saying that, right? Well, if I, if I do say it, I'm in the mix with everybody else. <laughs> all right, all right, let me continue. Let me continue. All right, all right. <laughs> I had to say that right. Okay, let me finish. All right. 47. And all of us assembly should know that the Lord saved it not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord, and He would give it into our hands. Amen. People of God, we can't. Pastor Henderson said it so well. We can't fight like everybody else fight. And you talking to an ex fighter, ex wannabe karate lady, whatever I was trying to do back in the days. You got to fight in the spirit. Quit going against people. Quit being mad with your family and your friends, said the Lord. Come on, somebody, y'all know what I'm saying. I ain't even got to go there all the way. Because family's not family no more. But if you in that family, you can make it family. But I, I saw you. 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 But you know what you do? You love them back to life with the word of God and, and cover your mouth. Because when we quit, you see, with strangers, we like, how you doing, honey? Oh. Now with family, he can't be high. <laughs> he get on my nerves. <laughs> In the same breath. Let me continue. Let me continue. I can be long. I can be long. Verse 48. And it came to pass when the Philistines arose and came and drew nigh to meet David. And David hasted and ran toward the army to meet the Philistines. David ran. I love David. I'm going to tell you right now. God calls me. He, he said, I remind him of David. Because I, I fight you. But not, not violence in the spirit all night long. Uh oh. The next thing we do, we're gonna take it back to prayer all night long. Y'all down? Y'all down? All night long. J just fill up. People don't do that no more. Because you wanna fight with words. You wanna fight and be hurtful. When the last time you stayed on the floor for eight hours? Come on somebody. Come on somebody. How they do you? They don't do that no more. Alright, let's continue, let's continue, let's continue. Hallelujah. Verse 49. And David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and slang it and smote the Philistine in his forehead that the stone sank into his forehead and he fell upon his face to the earth. Now, 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 I, I, I'm, I'm, not, I, I'm not the most intelligent person, but David was but a youth. Where did that power come from? 
that the stone actually, and, and hold on, it was some sort of a magnitude, they said, scholars say, that when it hit, he fell forward. Because usually when you get hit, you fall backwards. He fell forward. As if obedience to God. Y'all ain't ready for that for real. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Let's continue, let's continue. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Verse 50, verse 50. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and spoke the Philistine and slew him. But there was no spoil in the hand of David. 51. Therefore David ran and took upon the Philistine and took his own sword and drew it out of the ship thereof and slew him and cut off his head thereof. And when the Philistines saw that Chaphany was dead, they fled. Resist the devil and he will flee. Resist the devil and he will flee. These were those that are dealing with sin because I'm telling you right now, there's a lot in here. And, and hold on, all of us are dealing with sin. But some, you know God told you to stop that. Yeah, I'm in your business. You know God told you to stop that. It's not going to end well. <laughs> it's not going to end well. I'm going to say that one more time. It's not going to end well. Come on, I'm going to keep going, I'm going to keep going. I felt that. 52. And the men of Israel and Judah arose and shouted. Y'all remember yesterday? Stand up. Come on, somebody. Y'all know what time it is. Remember Joshua? Isn't that something that every time they get in the battle, they shout? Come on, somebody. And let me tell you something. You don't know Shabbat. That, that's what a shout is. You don't know what a Shabbat is? You feeling bad? You having a bad day? Something going on? I dare you to shout. So, on three, I want you to give God a shout. Don't shout for me, right? One, two, three, shout! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You can maybe see. Let me tell you something. You better learn how to start shouting in the midst of adversity, in the midst of tests, in the midst of trials. In the midst when you want to give up, in the midst when they don't love you, in the midst when they leave you, in the midst when they lie on you, just in the midst. A great anointing will come upon you, brother and sister of God, that will change your life. You got to do this thing like Jesus did. Amen. We have allowed the world to come in and have us even fight each other, where we don't even talk to each other. Mm. People are scared to say, I'm depressed. I'm suicidal, I'm hurting, because we don't know if it's gonna be in the street later on, or even over the pulpit. And pastors, you know you wrong. You don't be talking to people busy over the pulpit, you know you wrong. The only thing supposed to go in this pulpit is the word of God, salvation. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm almost finished. And pursued the Philistines until thou, until they came to the valley and the gates of Ekon. And he wounded up the Philistines, fell down the way of Shaul, even into God and unto Aaron, and that was the word of God. So let me finish this up, you guys, because we are pressed for time, but God, but God, hallelujah. Amen. All right, so God told me to tell you, again, the men of Israel were so afraid, God said, stop being afraid of anything and anyone. God is with you, and he'll always be with you, though always into death. And I know what I'm talking about. I proven that, come on somebody. The most powerful spirits that the devil uses fear. Fear will stop everything in your life. Right. As a matter of fact, the acronym for fear is false evidence appearing real. It ain't even real. And you know you stay busy. You know what busy is? Being under Satan's yoke. God said, come out. Come out from under that. Come out. Come on, somebody. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God. My God. My God. When you lift up your voice, God says, with a shout, he says, summons heaven. Heaven to respond. You're going through, shout. You're tired, shout. Need a breakthrough, shout. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Right. So I pray in the name of Jesus that this conference has blessed you, not just theological, to where you just heard some word, but that it really had a deposit. Because right here, I'm gonna teach you something. And I know everybody that did it, whether you were young or old. You know you didn't play with your neighbor, but don't lie. And it feels funny. This is the core of your Holy Spirit. That's why you don't like anybody just to pray over it. But a true man or woman of God, they'll activate that gift. They'll activate that gift. They'll activate that gift. So if you want it activated, I'm the activator. <laughs> All right.
Alrighty, alrighty, praise God, praise God. Well, everybody stand up and give the speakers a round of applause and just love in this house. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God. 